So, um, what I want to talk about is how can we engage the visitor to use less resources and contribute to the environment and have a better holiday. How can we do that? There is not a lot of example for us and there's a lot of scepticism that visitors will actually play ball and want to do it. So I, after some years of frustration and annoyance because I did believe that they did want to, I decided to do some research to demonstrate if it was possible. And I'm going to show you these research findings today um, and I'm looking forward to answering very difficult questions later so you can test me on it. Okay. So, uh, I chose four cottages in South, uh, New South Wales, Australia, which I own, and I've metered them so they record exactly how much electricity, gas, water, firewood that the guests use by the minute. So I know exactly what they're doing. Um, and I built a system which is called uh, a biomimicry system, which is essentially we are replicating nature. That's what the system is seeking to do. Because in nature, there are lots of guides of how to use less. And these really need to be conveyed back to people from the city who have forgotten perhaps how to do that in new and unfamiliar environments. Remember that when you go on holiday, if I invited you all now to come with me to visit my property in Kangaroo Valley, do you know what to pack? Do you know what the weather is going to be like in the night, during the day? And will you understand how to use the facilities in the cottage? Do you feel that way whenever you go and stay in any accommodation in any part of the world? It's not always clear. So the system um, helps us from a biomimicry point of view. For example, why do 70% of Australia's animals sleep during the day and work and eat and have fun at night? Because it's rather hot. So rather than all the white Anglo-Saxon people that determined to treat Australia rather like London or New York, the fact is that from a biomimicry point of view, we can see there are other ways of living in that environment. The second part is that I've trained people to be able to deliver um, a responsible <coughs> tourism message in a persuasive way, without upsetting the guests and getting them to reciprocate and join in and enjoy it. And thirdly, Sequential techniques, what that means in everyday language, is communication tools set at different stages of their stay. And that's helped us save a lot of resource. So first of all, in answering the brief of this presentation today, we're talking about advocacy and marketing, I split these points into, into two slides. So from an advocacy point of view, I use research. I use the data from exactly how much we've consumed per year and look at all the savings that we've made, and I can show our guests how much effort we've taken. Building from the previous presentation, honesty, directness, showing them that we're trying. And then, as you can possibly see from that small slide, that we then say, hey, how about saving a further 20%? How about helping us? So then we make recommendations. Recommendations because when you go into an unfamiliar accommodation in an unfamiliar building, you don't know how to use some of the infrastructure. You don't know what the weather is going to be like. So do you open the windows or do you not? Why is that important? Because natural ventilation is a lot less expensive than turning the AC on. We've got to the point where we're forgetting that we can open the window. I even have to explain to people that the fly screens that we have on the windows have locks so they can have the windows open at night. Because people in the city are frightened of people coming into their accommodation at night. So we've got into these situations where the host needs to build confidence with the, or the guest needs to build confidence in the host about using the infrastructure to help them use less resources. So you need to guide them. And what happens to all the financial savings that I make from all the energy and water? Do I keep it in my Swiss bank account? Or, I haven't got one. Or, do I actually invest it in a charitable cause in a local destination that will add value to the guest stay? So we do obviously the latter. <coughs> That's a baby one bat. A lot of our one bats are hit by tourists along, driving along. See, now you're all taking photographs. You see how persuasive it is, right? People love to see this and they love to see what, you're asking me to say, Chris, you've been honest and direct. I'm going to do it because I can see where the money's going to go and it's going to help local nature. That's a good reason. Okay, you've got me there. 
and lobbying. So I come to London and I show you this. That's part of the you know, we're sharing, collaborating, sharing innovation. That's critical. And that's also part of what any responsible tourism business should do. From a marketing point of view, we have communication materials. So we have a sheet of paper when people arrive that explains to them what the weather's going to be, what comfort suggestions, tips to keep cool at night or hot in the day, whatever you need to do, activities that relate to sustainable supply chain options in the local destination. But we don't use words like that, obviously. But appropriate activities for the weather. And then they get a further one the following day that tells them how much resource they've used compared to the 20% saving compared to the best performing guests. What do you think of that? <coughs> See, they go, oh. Now they accept it because I have been, as said previously, honest and direct. And so exactly as you've taken it, it's common sense and acceptable to hear that. We also have co-created experiences that come through this. For example, all the food scraps go into a bucket in the cottage and they can take it down and feed the chickens. So that way the food waste reduced. But also keeping warm is part of a co-created experience because they can walk around the property, collect wood and put it in their fire and heat them, uh, themselves that way. So there's lots of ways of using reducing energy, reducing water, making contributions that actually are a better experience overall. It's not a better experience turning the switch on, is it? And the air quality isn't that great either, is it? But it's much nicer to hear the birds. It's much nicer to smell fresh air. And a connection to place by giving them the, the idea of going out and seeing things. We give them things called bicycles. And they go out and they ride about and they see nature. They slow down and it gives them a better experience. You get the drift. I'm going to run over my eight minutes, I think. I've got one minute. Okay, very briefly. And it builds relationships. I don't think he's telling the time, right? It's got a different watch. So the results are that a 30% increase in consumption by people who are the controller. Now I'm presenting the figures that way, because there's lots of ways of presenting statistics, but these were done simultaneously on the same types of weather conditions on the same days. So when the intervention guest that received all that communication, they used less than the control at the same time using a third. A third of the energy, a quarter, around a quarter of the gas on water. What was the cost of that? Now, collectively, as I don't have a lot of time, you're going to say, but were they still happy, Chris? Same level of satisfaction, but critically, look at the middle point just here. Those that had not received the interventions of eco-feedback, not too sure, those who received it, they were okay about it. Those that received that sheet every day, three quarters said it added to their stay. So, the point is, you can go do co-created experiences from a low-cost platform that I would like to share. This is a sales pitch for any destination or accommodation provider that would like to trial my product. And it helps you improve your benchmarking and so forth. It helps you improve your communications and normalizes local cultural factors, such as in Australia we can talk about water saving because there isn't any. And by doing that, we are number one still ranked in our destination by TripAdvisor. We've got the green leaders and we don't have any comments negatively on this after 17 months, 1,000 guests. So, I open up by saying we're not doing enough. I'm now prepared to share this with you. So I'm looking forward to having long conversations with you afterwards. Thank you.